Hi folks, uh, this is uh, Richard Hall uh, from Stonehenge Aotearoa and uh, this is our night sky programme and I've got lots of special guests with me at the moment. Uh, first of all I've got my boss, uh, Kay, say hello over there. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kay, all right, and she and she work, she works with me at Stonehenge, all right, and uh, tries to tell me what to do all the time. And next to her, <laughs> next to her we got Stefan. Yeah, hi everyone. Nice um, to see you. One of uh, Wild Rapper's top musicians, and he's come along to play a few chords for us today. And hiding away over in the corner there is who's this coming here? Can oh, you, is, it might be. Uh, is that Keith? Looks yeah. like Keith. Hello, <laughs> Hello, How are you guys? Hello, Keith. Yeah. Another one of our, our musicians. And both of these guys often, on occasions, play out at Stonehenge as well. But they always have a series of things are coming up, and we can talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Okay, folks. Right, now, getting back to uh, stone circles and things like that. Oh, let's get that on. Right. Okay, what I wanted to talk about today, <laughs> I've, I've, managed to, I've managed to get it. Oh, come on. How's that? Yeah. Okay, look, folks, what I thought I'd talk about today is, is space and time. Uh, just noticing things on web pages and things like that, I find that people are, are um, continually making comments about light years and various things which gave me the impression a lot of people just simply just don't understand uh, what these things are all about and what they actually mean so what we're going to be doing today is actually having a look at space time and that includes i'm afraid also includes relativity it will come into that as well all right but um excuse me i won't be a moment folks let's go backwards in time <laughs> Well, you've got to travel backwards in time sometimes, yeah. <laughs> relativity is a, is a, is a, is a, is a fascinating subject. Yeah. yeah. I'm already doing quite well, relatively speaking. Yeah. Once you know. understand okay. how it works. Yes, that's right. And what, and what it's all about. Yep. Yeah. Right. Keep going. It keeps on going over the other way. Anyway, it's space, t space and time, and that includes relativity. And, of course, the moment you, you mention relativity, people get quite scared about it. What, what does it actually all mean? Because it's very complex. But, no, we're, we're going to be discussing relativity and explaining what it's actually all about. Uh, we don't have time to do all of that in this program, so uh, we'll be doing sp essentially looking at space, first of all, in this program, and then we'll tie in time at the next program, and then tie all the things together. So we'll get a, a bit of an understanding of what the universe is all about, okay? So that's, that's what our plan is. First of all, we're going to start, as I said, talking about space. Now, because we live on the surface of the Earth, our brains, over time, since we were kids, have managed to work out how big a thing is and how by looking at how far away it is using the, our eyes and so on and so forth so when we look at this picture that we can see on the screen at the moment you could, near the front for those who can't see it on radio there's a sheep and behind that stone hedge and behind that the tararuas for an actual fact it appears that the sheep is actually bigger bigger and taller than um stone hedge and in fact taller than the tararuas and then your brain tells you that's not the case because the only reason the shape appears big is because it's quite close to us, right? And that's the way in which our brain works, all the way looking at things on the Earth. See, we're so used to things in space around us here and the dimensions of things, you immediately put it into place. But I tell you what, if I put an object there you'd never seen before on that picture, you'd have great difficulty in working out how, how far it was just in the picture. Your brain can do that when you're using your own eyes because you're using the sort of parallax on your eyes right that's the way in which it works now this is precisely the problem we have when we look into space we look up there in the night sky we've got no idea how far away things are the general consensus of things of the brain is that if it's brighter it must be it's bigger it must be closer to us but i'm afraid that's not the track case at all we've got no idea of how far away those different objects are all right. So our brain immediately places everything at the same distance, namely infinity. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the cosmic scales, which our brains can't gather. 
for those of you watching this on TV, you can see a picture from Take of Wellington uh, looking at the full moon rising. All right? and how big would be the Earth if you, you put it the other way around? You, know, you were standing on the moon and looking back at the Earth. All right? It's a bit difficult to understand. I'll bring it up now. Okay, There it is there. There's the Earth. Hey, boy. <coughs> be pretty impressive wouldn't it you know seeing the earth from the surface of the moon and indeed this is one of the comments that came many many times from people who've landed on the moon now whenever we see a picture of the earth and moon it's like what you can see on the screen the earth and the moon together and okay now we've got them to scale but we're not showing them to the distances to scale so let's have a look at that first of all to get it into your brain how it works You've, everybody uh, listening has travelled at 100 kilometres per hour, yeah? Okay, so if you could travel at 100 kilometres an hour, non-stop, how long would it take you to travel right the way around the Earth? It would take a long time. <laughs> yeah, I've, long I've, short... I've okay. flown around the Earth in a, in a jumbo jet a few times. I know how yeah. long Okay, so, right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at... Well, we better send the send the uh, car around the earth there it goes boom there it goes okay and the answer is the journey around the earth will take 17 days okay at what speed 100 k 100 kilometers per hour yep. it would take us uh, 17 days to go around there so if it took you 17 days to travel right the way around the earth traveling 100 kilometers an hour how long would it take you to travel to the moon right we're sending the car car off to the moon well the answer is no one's going to give me an answer five months i was going to say <laughs> it would be several months to drive to the yeah moon. and this is because the moon's a lot further away than you imagine now what i'm going to do now for those who are watching this on tv is i'm going to bring you it bring it up showing the earth and moon to scale in size but also distance so let's have a look at that now so there we are there Okay, see there's a big lump of space there isn't there between the earth and the moon and this makes you realise that when you talk about journeys to the moon you've got to have your navigation quite right haven't you? Yes. There's <laughs> a hell of a lot more space up there than you think there is okay and in, uh, there it is the actual distance is 384,400 kilometres between the two all right and this is a wonderful photograph. It's one of my favourite photographs taken from the surface of the moon, the Earth up there. And if you look carefully, you can see an astronaut on the surface of the moon walking across. I'll bring up a little arrow. Hey, there he is there, yeah. just in there. OK, so there's the working across the moon. And the comment that all astronauts that ever travelled to the moon was the same, was their feeling that they had when they stood on the surface of the moon and looked back at the earth. And I know, I remember one of them saying, interesting thing is that though it appears bigger in, our, in the moon's sky than it does on our, the moon does in ours, yes. he said, holding my arm at arm's length, I could put my thumb up and cover the earth over completely. And he said, and you look there at your planet in this enormous vacuum of space and you think, Every living thing you know of, every bit of history, every human being, everything you've ever been taught about, all happens there on that little tiny ball, all right? Every piece of music that was composed, every yeah. scientific yeah, it all happens that was there. Devised, yeah, all on that tiny little ball. Yeah, garbage. yeah, and so it's quite, quite, quite stunning when you think about it like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's the Earth and the Moon there. Okay. Okay, so if it takes you, what did we say to take us uh, five months to get to the um, to the moon? Yeah. How long would it take us to get to the sun? Oh. Then we've got our little car there again. Okay, so we're going to send it off to the sun now. Right, the answer is 171 years. You'd never get there alive. <laughs> You'd be dead long before you got there. Now, this is immediately telling you the sun's a lot further away than you think it is, all right? It looks big, it looks close. It's about the, well, roughly the same size as the Earth or the moon in the sky, but it's a hell of a lot further away. Yes. Mm. And this immediately tells you, once you know how far away it is, that this thing is big. It's something like 400 times the... D 
um, further away yeah. from us than the moon. Yeah, that's right. And that, that gives you some idea of just the size of the solar system. Mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, um, this is because the sun is a star, right? And orbiting around the equator of that uh, star are the planets, and the Earth is just one of those planets, okay? Here we've got the sun and the uh, Earth to scale. Just see the Earth just out on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. You could see one and one million three hundred thousand Earths inside the volume of the sun. Yeah. And our sun is just a, a common garden variety of star. OK, yes, that's beginning to give you some scale to there. OK, so the sun is not not particularly big and spectacular. It's just a, an ordinary star. Yeah, that's right. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so different distance is 150 million kilometers, all right? All right. Okay, so having mentioned that, we're now going to turn back and look, have a look out into our night sky, all right? Now, looking out there, um, we're looking due south. Uh, luckily, you see in the evening tonight, around about sort of nine o'clock or something like that. And looking south, you can see the Southern Cross there laying on its side. And being followed behind it is the two pointer stars, which follow it round the sky. And of course, the Southern Cross is the most famous sign in the sky for people living in the Southern Hemisphere. But the important thing always to me is that of the two bright pointer stars, the brighter of the two, Alpha Centauri, is the nearest star system beyond the solar system. All right, the nearest star. Mm. So now we can. All right, it's a star. How far away is it? What is it? And so on. Well, we've brought in our car, as you can see now, just brought our car in. How long do you think it would take us to get to Alpha Centauri at 100 kilometers per hour? Remember, 171 years to the sun. It would take 700,000 <laughs> years. I just brought it up, 46 million years. A million? Okay. Yes, uh, Alpha Centauri is a long way away. So this is beginning to give you some sort of time scale to the size of these things at the moment. So if we're going to get to the um, to the stars, of course, what we have to do is use something a little bit faster than our 100 kilometer per hour. I don't know, for some reason, the laptop keeps on dropping out. So this means that we need to uh, travel at vastly greater speeds. And so what we're going to do is travel at the speed the speed of light, all right, which is the fastest thing known in the universe, all right. But um, before we do that, it might be a good idea if uh, these two guys give us a little bit of music. Yes. Would that be possible? <laughs> yeah, what do, you, what do you want to do, Keith? Oh, it's up to you, boss. Oh, is it a happy day? I think it's not too bad, eh? Yeah. Um. I don't know what, I think we're slightly to tune, but we'll, we'll figure it. How about the five foot two, eyes of blue, oh, what, what those eyes could do. Anybody see my gal? Turn down those, turn up those, flapper, yes, sir, one of those. Anybody see my gal? Now if you run it to five foot two, I bet your life it isn't her Well, could she love? Could she coo? Could she, could she, could she coo? Anybody see my girl? Oh, yeah. Five foot two, covered in birds, diamond ring, and all those things. I bet you love that isn't her. Could she love? Could she coo? Could she? Could she? Could she coo? Anybody seen my gal? Ba ba ba. Anybody seen my gal? I said anybody seen my gal? Oh, done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
blowing things up a bit. No. Yeah, well, I always wonder what aliens will be thinking when they hear this. Anyway, let's go. Hey, well, the aliens, <laughs> those guys have lost the plot again. <laughs> Yeah, so let's, so let's get back to light speed and what that's all about. I did like that um, little um, photograph of the Starship Enterprise you had <laughs> up there too, Richard. <laughs> Space, oh, well, the final well, frontier. That's right, yeah. Well, that's when people think of science fiction, that's the first thing they think about, isn't it? <clears throat> Star Trek, you know, which played uh, such a major role uh, in... Uh, These are the voyages <laughs> of the Starship <laughs> Enterprise. <laughs> do, you, do you remember I Love Lucy? Vaguely. Uh, yeah, Lucille Ball. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, of course she was famous and it, without Lucille Ball there would have never been a Star Trek. She was the one that pushed, got it, pushed it and got it all together she, and created a little company to make it happen. She yeah. persuaded the producers to do yeah. it a yeah. go. Yeah. But get rid of the Martian with the pointed ears. He, he, he's, <laughs> he's not going to work. It's not going to work. Well, the people thought that, didn't they? They thought that, no, this is this is really bad. Oh, everyone loved them, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, you've got pointy ears. Yeah, pointy ears. Yeah. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> anyway, let's get back. So, lights moves at, I've got the figures up there, but rounding up very, very close, it's 300,000 kilometres per second, right? That's how fast it moves. Now, if we were to travel, uh, bring it to the Earth, all right, if you travelled around the Earth at that light speed, well, you do it in the blink of an eye. It takes you just over a tenth of a second to travel all the way around the Earth at light speed. Mm. Our journey to the Moon, okay, would take just over a second, 1.3 seconds to get to the Moon at that speed, all right? And Alpha Centauri, much further away, it would take you 4.3 years. And that's for a beam of light to get to. That's right. Centauri. That's right. And so, therefore, as a speed of light, and that's why we use the term light years, because it's the one way we can measure. We say Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years away. Hmm. So, in other words, we're seeing Alpha Centauri as it was 4.3 light years away. And each star could then always, because light moves at a constant speed of that 300,000 kilometres per second, if you ever want to convert that into kilometres, you can do. That applies to all the other uh, objects up there in our night sky. Turning around to the north, looking up there, uh, we've got uh, a few interesting things in our sky at the moment um two bright planets we've got jupiter and mars in the sky they move along and a planet means wandering star and of course to our ancestors that's what they thought they were stars they they look like stars wandering around but the brightest star in the sky is actually sirius which can also be seen if you look due north and there it is up the top there all right and its distance is 8.6 light years all right but of all the most of the bright stars, most of the bright stars we see in the sky are not the common ordinary star. Right? Mm. They are actually giant stars that shine out over great distances. Right? So, for example, if you put our our sun out there much more than a few dozen light years away, you'd be difficult to see it without a pair of binoculars. Right? Mm. But most prominent in our evening sky at the moment, of course, is the constellation of Orion. And I was caught Orion is the realm of the giants. Right? There's Orion there, okay? And um, those big bright stars are all made up of giant stars. They're bright not because they're close to us, but because they are giant stars of, of enormous brilliance and so on. When so you, if you can say giant, you mean they're hundreds of times the size of our sun? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Well, Betelgeuse, for example, um, Betelgeuse, for example, the orangey red star, which is easy to pick up because of its colour, is 427 light years away. And Rigel, the brightest of the stars in the constellation that we can see, is 773 light years away. But all of these other stars are all at great distances as well. Okay? So, so in other words, uh, this tells you, I can, what you can tell you for a start off, that uh, both Rigel and Betelgeuse are, are, are super giant stars. I don't, don't, don't mean a you know, hundred times brighter, we're talking about tens of thousands of times brighter than the sun. And in fact, Betelgeuse itself is a red star, it's so big if you put it where the sun is, we'd be inside it. That's how big it is, right? Wow. But the important thing to bear in mind is when you look at these things, 
when we look at Betelgeuse, we're seeing it as it was 427 years ago. Yes. When we look, we look at Sirius, we're seeing it as it was nine years ago. And the further we look into space, the further backwards in time we look. So we never see the universe as it is. Mm. We see the universe as it was. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail then. T time itself. We can bring that in here. Okay. Looking at that. First of all, Alpha Centauri, 4.3 light years away. Right. That means uh, we see it as it was four years ago. On turn, somebody on a planet orbiting around Alpha Centauri, if we had a, uh, shall we say, a space station there, they would see the Earth as it was four years ago. Yes, they would be seeing our history. Our, our past becomes four, there today. Four years ago, yes. So, and don't, 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 we're making ourselves very Earth-centred here at the moment, saying this is behind in time or that's advanced in time, but in fact it's actually dependent on who you are and where you're standing. So if you were standing on a planet around Alpha Centauri right now and you were looking up there, you would see the Earth as it was in the year 2019. Well, of course, um, Jacinda was uh, still the New Zealand Prime Minister at that time and you could witness from there the White Island eruption. Right? And going further abroad, Theresa May was uh, Prime Minister of England and Brexit and Donald Trump was being impeached yes. at that time. <laughs> okay. So these are all our past, but for somebody standing on a planet around Alpha Centauri, that would be today, happening today on that planet. On that planet. Okay, yeah. So that's that one there. Now let's go further afield, look at Betelgeuse, 427 light years away. All right, let's imagine a planet around there. Uh, or in that vicinity, looking out at us here, what are you going to see of England? Uh, oh, oh, yes. Well, they wouldn't see my hair. Uh, queen Elizabeth I was um, Queen of England at that time. All right. Shakespeare is writing his sonnets yeah. and his yeah. plays. Yes, 1596. Mm. And indeed, round about the time you'll be looking at now, if you were lucky, you could go down and you see actually the very first play of um, playing of... Um, the Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. <laughs> All right. So that would be your today if you were looking. So you would think, oh, that civilization out there, they're not, they're not that very, they're, they're intelligent, but they're not, their technology is not very advanced. They don't have cars or anything like that. Because mm. uh, that's what the, how they would see us, okay? Yes, they haven't even discovered electricity yet. No. <laughs> now, near, near to Sirius, Right, is a in the in the back of what they call the dog, is Tau Canis Major, and it's the brightest of a cluster of stars. There's about 50 stars there, which can be easily seen with binoculars and so on. Okay, and they're 5,000 light years away. And the reason I picked this one up, because again, imagine a planet out one of those, and and every every star is going to have its own planetary system. All right, of course, what they would be able to observe there is that these people building this stone edifice in England. All right, <laughs> they would be able to observe the building of Stonehenge. In not the one in New Zealand, <laughs> the, one in, the original one in England. All right, they've observed that being taken place there. And they probably wonder, what are they building? Why are they doing that? Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now that's the the most distant object that we can see in the night sky at the moment. All right. I say at the moment is the small Magellanic cloud. Normally, the most distant object we can see in the sky is when it's up there is uh, uh, the great galaxy in Andromeda. All right, but uh, that's really you've got to go and look at that during the autumn and so on. All right, but anyway, here we've got the small Magellanic cloud is the most distant object in the sky at the moment, and uh, there it is a photograph of it now. Can be easily seen with the unaided eye. Its distance is 199,000 light years or 200,000 light years, and imagine that again because all those stars out there have planets. And so we've got another planet out there and it's looking back at Earth, all right? So what do they see? They've got very super technology whereby they can observe our planet in detail, all right? So what can they actually observe? Uh, so looking back from a uh, small Magellanic cloud, mm. well, it will be a very different world to what you can see today. And uh, this would be woolly mammoths and glyptodons moving around and so on. And uh, Woolly mammoths. <laughs> 
That's right. Saber tooth cats and so, you know, exactly all those oh, sorts of things. Really yeah, right. yeah. That's a photograph I took last week when I travelled back there. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what someone in the small Magellanic cloud. In the small Magellanic, so. which is still on cosmic scales, quite close to us. And they they, they notice these little creatures wandering around. There we are, folks. Yeah. That's, that's out because the very first, earliest representatives of our line, Homo sapiens, right. appeared 200,000 years ago. Yeah. And there they are. And that's right? my great, great, great yeah. granddad there. So looking back at the Earth. I see the resemblance there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so looking back at the Earth, right, aliens looking down on the Earth, what they would see, of course, was... Uh, uh, there they were. That's the most advanced species on the planet. And... Uh, Okay, <laughs> yeah, looks a bit scary. and uh, we will be in the Stone Age, of course. Uh, now, this is something to bear in mind when we look out at other planets. So we're looking at something, uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of light years away. Even when we detect things, we're going to detect something that was there hundreds of years ago, right? Mm. Thousands of years ago. That what we might see, there might be an advanced civilization on there now. Mm. Who knows? Mm. So this is an, the other perspective we've got to bring is. We've been talking about space and distances, and we've started to talk about time, the distance things are away from us, right? But how about thinking about travelling a journey into space itself, right? And what about not only journey to space? Look at technology in advance. So we look at super civilization. Not only where we could be, but where others may already be. What about time travel? Is it actually possible? Can you leap backwards in time? Can we travel through time? Well, we don't have time to discuss that, of course, today, but that's going to be our topic uh, at next meeting uh, of the light sky, which will be in two weeks from now. So we're going to be looking at time travel, the possibilities of time travel, and what you could experience uh, with time itself. Okay? So there you are. And one final thing to, I should mention before we finish off, we've got coming up star date. And that's going to be held at Stonehenge from February the 17th, which is a Friday, to Sunday the 19th, over three days. And there's going to be night sky tours, photography, telescopes, movies, exhibitions, yeah. barbecues, lectures, and live music. Hopefully these guys here come along with my music. So listen, still alive, it's, it's yep. all, yes, still he's still alive, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, it's all coming up, and if people come from any distance and they want to stop overnight, uh, we can probably arrange that as well, okay? Okay, have you got anything to say on that? Right. But the important thing, folks, is to book in. You just phone Stonehenge. All right? You can go on our webpage and get the details of what the program is and so on, and then just give us a call because you do... or email us because we need to know who's coming and that sort of thing because the numbers will be limited. Can I mention one thing? Oh, you certainly can. All right, Richard. The, the choir, which is a tribute of singers, which is a regular thing, is starting again next Monday. Um, yeah, next Monday at the Warrimpa Community Centre, tribute of singers. So those of you out there who are part of that, we'd love to see you again. Um, yeah. And Keith's part of that as well. He's yes. Well, to, what time is that? We go from six to about uh, what, good, lovely, nine yeah. normally. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. look, look forward Eight, to that. Nine. Yeah, it's pins. But so I'm where is it? They've got to go. The Warrapa Community Centre. Lovely. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Okay then, folks, and we'll uh, log off now, and um, we'll be catching you in the near future. Hopefully, we're going to be seeing you at start date. But just before then, we're going to have our next program coming up. Yes, and always check the uh, check the website to see what's happening at Stonehenge. That's right. Thank you, Keith. Exactly. Good night. Good night. Good day. <laughs> Dark sky. You. Yeah.